Radioactivity, Henri Becquerel and Marie and Pierre Curie. Würzburg, Germany, November the 8th, 1895. The Institute of Physics at Würzburg University. Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen, the head of the institute, was working in his laboratory. Using an induction coil, Röntgen generated high voltage, which he fed to two metal electrodes in a partially evacuated glass tube. The tube began to glow. By chance, Röntgen discovered that a screen coated with barium platino cyanide was also made to glow when held near the tube. To find out more about this phenomenon, Röntgen wrapped the tube in black paper. The screen still glowed. It appeared that rays were being emitted from the glass, which could even pass through dense material. What's more, these X-rays, as Röntgen called them, seemed to be closely connected with the phenomenon of fluorescence. Röntgen collated his findings in a treatise entitled On a New Kind of Radiation. On New Year's Day, 1896, Röntgen received some special editions, which he sent out to colleagues together with his first X-ray pictures. One recipient was Henri Poincaré in Paris. The French mathematician and astronomer then addressed the Academy of Science on the mysterious rays discovered by Wilhelm Röntgen. One member of the Academy, Henri Becquerel, was particularly interested in the connection between the X-rays and the phenomenon of fluorescence. Becquerel studied all available fluorescent materials to see whether they could darken a photographic plate wrapped in black paper. Then, on March the 1st, 1896, Becquerel developed the plate. He was amazed. Although the experimental setup had been exposed to hardly any sunlight, the photographic plate had darkened. Becquerel had discovered a new kind of radiation, but hardly any attention was paid to the uranium rays, as he called them. However, it was this very lack of interest shown by the world of science that prompted an aspiring young woman scientist to begin studying uranium radiation. Her name was Marie Curie. A student from Poland called Maria Sklodowska, in 1895 she had married the famous physicist Pierre Curie. Her first scientific work was a rather insignificant study on the magnetic properties of steel. There's no doubt that she benefited from the influence of Pierre, a specialist in the field of magnetism. In 1897, Marie Curie gave birth to their first daughter, Irene. She saw this as no reason to abandon her scientific work. Marie Curie wanted to obtain a doctorate, the first woman in Europe ever to do so. She hoped to break new scientific ground with a study on uranium radiation. And she recorded her first success after only a few days. Marie Curie discovered thorium, another radiating element. It soon became clear to her that the activity of the uranium compounds was determined solely by the number of uranium atoms they contained, irrespective of the nature of the chemical compound itself. But two minerals containing uranium, one of them pitchblende, radiated more powerfully than could have been expected from their uranium content. This meant that they had to contain small quantities of another radioactive substance. This substance now had to be isolated. The Curies began an initial experiment with 100 grams of pitchblende. 
Marie dissolved the crushed pitch blend in acid and separated the elements contained in it. She used the methods of analytical chemistry, which were already classic even at that time. Finally, Marie Curie succeeded in obtaining a powerfully radiating black powder from the bismuth fraction. In honor of her home country, she named the element contained in it polonium. She also coined the term radioactive for the behavior of these radiating substances. Pitch blend also appeared to contain another highly radioactive element, radium. In 1899, the Curies received several tons of waste from the pitch blend mine in St. Joachimsthal in Bohemia. The uranium which the material had contained originally had already been removed for use in manufacturing glass. Marie Curie concentrated on separating the material while Pierre assumed responsibility for the analysis. Marie had undoubtedly chosen the more dangerous task, but at the time hardly anything was known of the harmful effect radiation has on living tissue. When she entered her laboratory at night, Marie Curie observed a glow emitted by the solutions enriched with radioactive elements, a visible sign that she was getting close to her goal. She finally achieved it in 1902, when she isolated a tenth of a gram of radium. The following year, in 1903, Pierre and Marie Curie received the Nobel Prize for Physics. The Curies shared the prize with Henri Becquerel, the physicist who discovered radioactivity. In 1911, Marie Curie was awarded a second Nobel Prize, this time for chemistry. Radioactivity is a property of the atomic nucleus. An unstable atomic nucleus emits radiation and is transformed into a more stable state. This can involve particle radiation, for instance the particles that surround the nucleus of the helium atom, or electrons. On the other hand, other nuclei can emit high-energy electromagnetic waves. Around 1920, Marie Curie's health began to fail as a result of her work, but she continued to attend congresses and give guest lectures. On July the 4th, 1934, Marie Curie died from the after-effects of handling radioactive materials for many years without any form of protection. Soon after, medical science began to find applications for radium. Radium plasters were used to treat tumors. With this method, helium nuclei emitted by the plaster and known as alpha rays killed off cancerous cells in the skin. This was an early form of radiation therapy. The women who painted the dials of aircraft instruments faced a grim fate. Using a fine brush, they applied phosphorescent paint containing radium. From time to time, they'd put the tip of the brush between their lips to taper it. Many years later, most of them died of cancer. In 1935, Irene, the eldest daughter of Pierre and Marie Curie, was awarded the Nobel Prize along with her husband, Frédéric Joliot Curie. The previous year they had discovered how atomic nuclei can be excited to emit rays if they themselves are exposed to radiation. The Joliot Curies had thus discovered the phenomenon of artificial radioactivity. One of France's leading nuclear physicists, Frédéric Joliot, spearheaded the French anti-nuclear peace movement.
radioactive substances that do not occur in nature, like plutonium, are formed in perceptible quantities in thermonuclear explosions. As a result of the surface testing of atomic weapons in the 50s and 60s, radioactive material was carried to even the most remote areas of our planet. Radioactive isotopes are specifically produced in particle accelerators and obtained in larger quantities in nuclear reactors. They are used in science, technology and medicine. To protect scientists and technicians, highly radioactive material is kept behind concrete walls several metres thick and windows made of lead glass. Manipulators, as they're known, enable all operations, like the rectification of radioactive compounds, to be carried out safely. Radionuclides in the service of medicine. Radioactively tagged compounds accumulate in cancerous tissue and help surgeons to localize the tumor. The most well-known example of this is radioiodine. Radioactive iodine administered in this case as a liquid accumulates primarily in the thyroid gland. The distribution of radiation that is measured gives an indication of any malfunctioning of the gland. Today there is hardly any area of modern science in which radioactive isotopes do not play a role. They help scientists study the chemical processes taking place in living cells. They enable doctors to trace the path taken in the body by medicaments and thus determine malfunction in specific organs. Chemical compounds can be tagged radioactively to reveal reaction mechanisms. And radioactive isotopes are an everyday tool used by molecular genetic engineers to read genetic codes. The isotopes needed for this are produced in research reactors. At their core, reactions take place which turn stable atomic nuclei into unstable radioactive nuclei. Natural radioactivity was discovered around 100 years ago. This pioneering work enabled modern conceptions of the structure of the atom and the processes within the atom and its nucleus to be formulated. In contrast to what had previously been thought, the atom, and even its basic building blocks, turned out to be divisible after all. With the help of large-scale research plants like this particle accelerator, scientists are gaining a deeper and deeper insight into the heart of the matter, in the hope of being able to answer the last open questions.